Hey there, it's Lisa Niven Kelly here for Beachcation.com, and today I'm going to show you this cool tool that we just got that helps you set crystals in blanks. So this tool creates a nice indentation in the metal so that you can lay the flatback crystal right there in that indentation with a little bit of glue and there's no edge to catch. It's sort of set down in there. It's going to be much more secure. Let me show you how to do it. All right, this works just like stamping. I'm gonna lay this stamp, this punch, exactly where I want it to go and then hit it a bunch of times with my hammer. You can stamp your piece first if that's what you're working with and then set the crystal or the opposite. I wouldn't um, stamp after I've glued the crystal in, but you can certainly make the indentation and then stamp whatever direction that you want. All right, so I'm just gonna hold it exactly where I want it, right here and give a couple of strong whacks with my brass hammer. I'm gonna rotate it slightly as I do that. Let's check it out. Oftentimes it'll stick right on your metal, just pull it off. And here's what it look lo looks like. So it's put a nice, perfect little indentation, just enough to hide the edge of my crystal. It's also distorted the metal, which is definitely gonna happen. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that now. Okay, I'm gonna come in and hit this with my plastic mallet to get it back to flat. I'm gonna use a little piece of leather, I think this is actually ultra suede or a pro polish pad or something, to lay the metal on to protect it from getting scratches from the bench block. And now it's black, back flat. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in a bit about the different metals that I recommend, what gauges do and don't work, so hang out for that. We're gonna do some problem solving. But for now, everything's going A-OK. -okay. So I've got my divot, I've got my crystal. I prefer to use the hypo cement because it's got this nice pointed little applicator. It's like needle thin. You can certainly use E6000, two-part epoxy. If you were doing something like that, I would put the glue on a piece of paper and then get a toothpick to sort of spread it into the hole. You wanna be very careful, or the divot rather, not the hole. You wanna be careful not to put too much glue in there so that when you put the crystal in, it doesn't ooze out over the edges. So I've got my new little guy here. And I actually use the paper because oftentimes too much comes out at first. Just a little bit, there we go. And I'm gonna put my applicator back in here or my lid, which I'm going blind. See that little dot there? of glue that's sticking out. You wanna wipe that off. I got a tissue here before you put the, the lid back on and then it won't have a bunch of glue in there and sort of glue it shut. All right, so now I've got a nice amount of, little bit of glue in here. I'm gonna take my crystal, you can pick it up a variety of ways. I like to just press my finger on it to pick it up and sort of lay it right next to the hole and then pop it in there. So the way you can tell if it's in there well, sorry, there's a crazy reflection on this metal, is I hold it with my finger on top and kind of wobble back and forth. And you can tell that it's hitting the edge of the indentation, which means it's in the indentation, right? If I went like this and it was sliding all over, that means it's not in. So this guy is nice and, and you can see that there's no edge sticking up it's sunk into the metal, so that's gonna be very, very secure. See the edge is sunk in there? Now, if you had too much glue, just wait for it to dry, and most glues you can just sort of pick off. This guy's all set. If I had stamped and had my hole already, I put a jump ring on, and I'm good to go. I would let the glue set for about a day, about 24 hours. But there's some issues that can come up with this, and let me walk you through those now. Let's first talk about how hard they hit it. You saw in my sample just now, I hit it a couple times. This is just a scrap piece of metal. That's the good old United States. And that gives a nice, perfect indentation. Let's get a close up here. See how it's created just a nice little edge. That's great. Now you can definitely do it too light where it really won't make a difference. The crystal won't set in there. So that's just not enough. If your stamp is tilted, you're gonna get a deep 
edge on one side and not the other, so make sure you're nice and straight. And then now, the other issue is doing it too hard. So I'm gonna hit it really hard here, I'm gonna get crazy. Okay, this will happen, it sticks on, you saw on my first one. But pull that guy off. Now this got a little out of control. Well, you can see it's really displaced the metal in the back. You will always see that circle on the back when you use this tool because you're really thinning the metal so there's nowhere else for it to go so don't worry about that that's always going to happen but this one is a little much <laughs> i think this might be salvageable this is 18 gauge aluminum it's pretty soft so i would put it back on that piece of leather or ultra suede or whatever you're using to protect it protect your blank from your bench block and hit it a couple times with the plastic mallet let's try that I'm going to turn it this way. So that's helped a little bit. Don't worry, you're not going to push the metal right back through so it's right flush up with the surface. But what happens if with hitting it too hard is, yes, I've salvaged this a little bit, but it's made it so extreme that it's going to look a little weird with the crystal in there. Let me pick up a crystal and see if I can whoop I just launched one that was awesome let me get this little diamond guy in there so it's sitting really great in there you know it's nice and protected it's in the edge but the metal's so distorted you've got like this weird little shadow around it so not the end of the world but this would not be my first preference you want to get it about this deep this one over here is too light this one on the left is best So let's talk about what type of metals and what gauges this works really well with. These are just two scrap pieces up there. They're not particularly pretty, so ignore those. Uh, what I demonstrated on was 18 gauge aluminum. It's nice and soft. It's thick enough that it really takes the stamp well with enough room in the metal that it doesn't stick out super far in the back. All of these are aluminum here. Let's see, this one is pewter. This works great, because it also is thick. It's about a 16 gauge, but it's so soft that I didn't have to hit the stamp very hard to get the right little dent there. So make sure that you're hitting the stamp with the appropriate amount of power behind it, depending on what metal you're using. For example, this is nickel. And this I was really pushing because this is 24 gauge and I originally thought that this tool would not work on 24 gauge because think about it this way 24 gauge is really really thin so you have to push the tool in enough to make a nice indentation with a nice edge to hold the crystal but if it's super thin that space in the metal just doesn't exist so I wasn't thinking that it would work well on 24 gauge and my honest opinion is it's not great but you can do it. Both of these are 24 gauge. Nickel is a really hard metal. So what I did here is I tried to make an indentation. It didn't go great. And then I annealed the metal. So I way softened it out and I was able to get a better one. But you can see it pushed through on the back. Um, same on this copper one. I didn't have to kneel it because it's a softer metal. And I was able to get, you know, a decent indentation, but what you're looking for is a little bit deeper so that you have a little more edge to hold the edge of the crystal. So 24 gauge, not awesome. I would rent, recommend it for 22 and thicker, 18 being great. That's what the majority is here. And let me just show you a couple of these samples. I wanted to point this out because, you know, you don't have to use these crystals just for birthstones or uh, someone's favorite color. This is just a fun charm that I made with a crystal and our fan stamp stamped four different times. This J is kind of fun. I put the crystal up by the top of the J and that was on purpose. It almost looks like I didn't do it on purpose, but I liked it sitting somewhere kind of fun rather than traditional, like off to the, you know, perfectly centered or in the bottom corner or the centered bottom. These two pieces, in my opinion, is what I think people use it mostly for, like a long rectangle. I think it looks just fantastic with somebody's name, these two boy names here. Actually, this is Sam is a girl and Luke is a boy. And yes, it's pink and blue, but those are birthstones. <laughs> um, just really, really nice. Works great on the aluminum. Yes, you'll see it po poking through on the back, but you're always going to see a little bit of scratch and impression there. And I just I really love the way these look. And they've 
been glued a couple days ago. I'm running my fingernail and I cannot catch the edge. Like these bad boys are not coming out. So there you have it. Pretty straightforward, pretty fun. It's a really simple tool, but it does some cool stuff. Just like with everything though, make sure you practice, practice, practice. Like if you're gonna be setting these crystals in aluminum, get a practice piece of aluminum and hit it a bunch of times to make sure that before you move into your perfect stamped piece that you've got the right you know, amount of power behind it and you're not hitting it too hard, not too soft. It's gonna take just like anything else, a little bit of practice.